Okay. And because um, I just think that a lot of people who can't attend and would like to attend but can't, you know, have an opportunity to review the recording at a later date. I do post them on um, YouTube. So, okay, well, I want to introduce a couple of people uh, that are here. Um, so Andy Squires is here and she's with um, California Telephone Access. Oh. And uh, she has presented to the Hearing Well Club. We're now known as the Mission Viejo chapter. And um, she's also um, headed up cell phone training, smartphone training, uh, both for Android and for Apple uh, iPhones. Um, so, uh, so Andy, you want to, you have an announcement, you have something you'd like to tell us? Uh, well, I just sort I, first of all, wanted to say hello to everyone. Cause I was out for, uh, for three months and that was being out for three months really made me realize how much I really love this job. I'm, I'm in my 20th year here and, um, a small part of me thought, well, three months off, you might not miss it, but I missed it. Um, so yes, I am with CTAP. We've been doing the uh, smartphone trainings online since COVID, and they will now have the option of being captioned. We worked on that and now, uh, some of the trainings will be captioned if uh, people need the captions. So I'll put up my phone number here in a minute, right above my head. Um, I don't like swimming around with that background. It feels a little strange, but I'll put it up so you'll have my contact information. Um, and I'll forward the flyer to Tony so that you can have the dates in writing if you need those. Uh, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I'm happy to answer anything or you just want to say hello that's fine too <laughs> um does anybody need captions and not getting them uh you can turn on captions just by clicking on the uh, cc button icon on the bottom lower hand screen also um there is down at the bottom there is reactions and if you click on reactions, there's there's a raise hand option just for practice. Let me see your raised hand. Let's see if everybody, that's a, uh, Jana, that's a thumbs up. You want a raised <laughs> hand. Okay, and Don Ann, that's a clapping. Okay. Winnie, that's a thumbs up. Okay, let me get Jana, the hand. Okay. Th uh, Raised Tony? hand is, is the big bar in the raised hand. Yeah. Anyway, good. So that way, if you have a question, I'm going to ask oh, you yeah. to use the raise hand feature. Uh, by the way, you can also lower your hand Ooh. by going back in there and clicking raise hand again, and it'll lower it. So, um, and and if you don't do that, I can do it for you. <laughs> okay. Then so you would you got, cash, to that. You've got raise hands, so that's that's where we're at. I still haven't found my raise hand. Uh, am I? I don't want to take people's time, but any quick ideas? Okay. You, maybe you're not looking at full screen. Um, oh. Okay. Go. Up Let in the me, top right hand corner it says view. View. You, you can be in full screen oh, or okay. you can exit full screen. So you want to be in full screen. And I, then maybe they won't get covered up. Maybe you'll see them. Okay. What type of device is she using? Yeah, what are you, you using? A desktop or a laptop, Nancy? Laptop, yeah. A laptop. Alrighty. 
Um, okay, well, maybe you're going to have to raise your hand. I know what happened. Um, the menu at the bottom was not visible until I moved my mouse to the lower part of the screen. And then all those options appeared for me. The participants chat share screen. Thank you, know. Tracy. Some people have their settings so that all of those the toolbar disappears when you're not using it. So if you tap on the screen, they'll pop up. See if that works, Nancy. I'm having interference. I'm, uh, okay. I'm so sorry. I, uh, can you? <laughs> well, I will. I will make sure that if you have a question, we'll, we'll get to you. You're yeah, yeah. going to have to physically raise your hand. But here's oh. the problem. You get you get a lot of people in here, and then I don't see everybody. You fall off the screen, and you have to flip. So when you raise your hand, you pop up the first screen right up at the top left-hand side, and then I can't miss you. So that's why learning how to use raise hand, not just for my meeting, but for any Zoom meeting, it would be really beneficial for you to do that. Okay, I've got some questions. And I'm going to throw out a poll. Okay. Here's the question. This is yes or no. Um, are, are there any first time attendees? Okay. And we have 11 people and we've got eight answered. Nine. 10. One more person. Okay, that maybe that's me. <laughs> that could be me because I'm a co-host and I oh, can't okay. participate. Yeah, I don't in think poll. we can vote. No. Okay, I'm going to end the polling. And just to make this interesting, I'm going to share the results. So we have looks like we have two new people here. Yay! I think I know who you are too. <laughs> Only because your names are um, not familiar to me. Okay, so I'm going to, and I've got another, another question. So my question here is, do you wear hearing aids or cochlear implants? Wow. Boy, that was quick. Thank you. You guys are really good poll takers because you you really went right through it. Okay, so here's the results. So six of you have hearing aids. One one of you have cochlear implants, and one of you has like one of each. And you've got three people that are none of the above. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, I I have hearing aids and I submitted a, yeah, a hearing aids button. Okay, I'm, I think I missed that. All right, next question. How do you find the information that you need to make decisions about your hearing loss and hearing health care. So internet searches, family or friends, hearing health care professionals. What if it's more than one? Or well, you only just pick one. And the other one is my quest for info is just starting. Okay. We got 11 people. Not one of you chose internet search. That's interesting. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to share those results. So, so most of you get your information from hearing healthcare professionals. Excellent. Okay, and this is the, this is the last question. Have you explored the chapter's website? Uh, 
Okay. So maybe Alan in the chat box, would you please put in our um, the chapter website address? We're at um, www dot h l a a m v so h l a a stands for hearing loss association of america and m v is mission viejo but just so you know we are serving all of south orange county not just mission viejo so okay thank you for all of that thank you for all right so we have some questions out there. Now, Tracy um, sent me a, a question. But before I get to you, Tracy, I also want to mention that Anne Mundell Noel is on this Zoom meeting uh, with, with us. And Anne Mundell Noel is our audiology advisor. She is an audiologist in Laguna Hills. So she's close by. Uh, centrally located in the South Orange County and uh, and okay so she's here uh, and I really appreciate it because you're taking time away from your professional day to answer any technical questions uh, because we're I, I'm not a licensed professional I know a lot I can help you with a lot of things but and and she's correcting me sometimes right on camera and I, but I appreciate her expertise. And so Tracy, I'm gonna go right to your question because you, you emailed it to me this morning and you're lucky that I saw it because right before a meeting, I don't necessarily check my emails, but okay. So she says, I suddenly lost my hearing in my right ear, February 26th this year. Since then I've taken steroid pills two steroid injections in the eardrum and five sessions of hyperbaric oxygen chamber sessions. Wow. I've gained minor hearing, but still considered profound hearing loss. Now I experience crackling and popping sounds and sometimes very low humming sound. Wow. It's beyond frustrating and I'm no longer able to sleep through the night as the crackling and popping sounds wake me up. Additionally, I have otosclerosis in my left ear. Fortunately, it's mild and do not wear a hearing aid. So these are her questions. Has anyone experienced sudden hearing loss in one ear? Yes. Okay, so we got, we do have a couple of people. Uh, does the crackling and popping sounds go away over time? Does anybody want to address that? Who who has crackling and popping? And tell me about how long you've had that. And do you have good and bad days? Or has it stopped or anything like that? So I think, Winnie, you raised your hand. Yeah, but I don't have any popping. And it's been a lot of years. I was on a bus trip. And all of a sudden, uh, I remember I went to use the phone. And it, I, it sounded so bizarre. Um, you know, it was real muffled and, uh, and weird, you know, so I wasn't able to do anything until I got back home. Um, somebody said, if you get it taken care of within uh, 24 hours, you have a chance of not losing your, your hearing, but I didn't know that at the time. And, you know, that's so Tracy, it. Tracy just des described some of the treatment that is recommended uh, by medical doctors regarding the steroid injections and um, and pills and whatever. So that, that's always, always sudden hearing loss should be looked at professionally, preferably with a otolaryngologist, an ENT doctor, um, as, as soon as you can. Within, at, as Winnie suggested, 24, 48 hours. Um, or even if you find out about it 72 hours later, you learning this information might be helpful to somebody else that you meet who suddenly has a problem and they don't know that they should be seeing a doctor. So kind of keep that under your hat uh, for yourself and, and for somebody else. 
Anybody else want to comment about their sudden hearing loss? And Ann, you're the professional. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I would say that um, oftentimes the sudden hearing loss comes as a virus, right? It attacks the weaker part of your body, just like catching the common cold. Um, we don't know why it picks that e it picks the ear and that happens. Um, you did all the right things, Tracy, as far as going to the doctor and the steroids. My question would be, um, has the, have you, had any change in your hearing test results like this started in February have you been retested like every two months to find out if the hearing on that left side has recovered and if so is there any movement so initially when I lost the hearing I actually the kind of funny I was on the phone and it was just all of a sudden it just I couldn't hear um, I had pretty much severe vertigo, um, lost balance, and I could not hear anything out of that ear at all. When I did the steroid pills, there was no change. They were testing me weekly on the hearing. There was no change whatsoever. When I did the first steroid injection, um, I was able to hear very uh, faint, the test beeping, you know, the beeps, uh, very faint. And so they did another round of steroid injections in the eardrum, but there was no change. So that's when we went to the hyperbaric. And there seems to have been a little slight um, increase in hearing. But what I noticed is now I have more of that popping and crackling and that humming sound. And it's um, I, I'm hoping if I opt to do a hearing um, adaptive device that those sounds will go away. Um, I, I'm not sure what the case is. Um, I do see Dr. Show at Newport Beach and I have an appointment in September who will, he wants to wait till six months out because they have found some people continue to gain some additional hearing up to six months. So he doesn't want to consider any hearing devices until six months. Well, you're in the best hands. I mean, he is definitely the doctor to go to for those kinds of things. Um, and at that point, I'm sure it's frustrating right now, but there are things you can do. Like if you can't sleep at night, there's a tinnitus pillow. We sell a little speaker that goes under your pillow and it can play sounds to try to give your brain um, information that it's not getting, you know, physically even though we're sleeping, the brain is still looking for sound and that popping and, and infer sounds that you're getting might be helped by something like that. You could try even a sound generator um, if you didn't want to do that, where you get a, you know, your Alexis or your speaker and put on a tinnitus program and try to play some sound so that you could give your brain some information that also might help. It's a cheaper way to go. Uh, I really appreciate it. I will definitely look into both options. Um, Widex has a app on there uh, in the Play Store or in the um, Apple iTunes Store, and it's a Zen, Z-E-N program for tinnitus, and it's something that um, might be helpful for you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I have a question. May I ask? May I say something, Serena? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, Rena. Go ahead. Yeah, I just was wondering if any doctor recommended the brain scan. Maybe something could just connect it with the. Uh, maybe God forbid. Maybe there's tumor there or something or some just uh, like growth in the ear. Did, did okay. you do any scan? Yes, that actually was done within the first couple of weeks. We did an MRI, so there was no stroke, no tumor oh, in the particular ear. Um, they do believe I could have been asymptomatic for COVID. Um, I was tested for the antibiotics, which came back negative, but it was on the higher, um, higher level, but still negative. And we know there's still a lot of research to be done on the antibiotics test. So it's definitely possible. Uh, but they do suspect it was a viral infection. Oh, yeah, that's what I suspected, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Tracy also had a, a couple of other questions. Um, has anyone uh, gone with a hearing devices, uh, or like a bicross um, or a bone anchored hearing aid? Um, Anne, would you describe what a bicross is for everybody? Um, so a bicross is a device where you have one ear that's dead and one ear that is good or one ear that's distorted, like in Tracy's case right now. And you put a microphone on the side that's not hearing so that it communicates with the side that is hearing. And it allows you to ha have awareness of sound of somebody sitting on that weak side of you so that you could turn and be in communication with them. But it's a microphone that is actually picking up the sound and transferring it over to the good ear. So it's a, it's a, um, a helper. It's not the best. I mean, if you have any ability to be able to get sound and the hearing aids today talking back and forth to each other are so good that we try now to keep hearing aids on both ears rather than the microphone and the pickup. But if it's, if it's not possible, if, if, if wearing two hearing aids distorts the good ear, then we go with the microphone and the hearing aid, if that makes sense. So our ideal is to always try to get as much sound from both ears as we can. In the old days, we did a lot more bicross when somebody had a weaker ear because the two hearing aids were working independently. Now the hearing aids talk to each other so much, like 100,000 times a second, that they work <coughs> like our brain scan, our brain nerves do. And so wearing two hearing aids, even if it's weaker, oftentimes gives better results as long as it doesn't pull away from the clarity of the good ear. So I would say hang in there, Tracy. Um, a bone anchored hearing aid, you know, you're going to anchor it into the bone to get sound and bypass the cochlea. The Dr. Show has got a lot of options. So you're again in really good hands with that, but definitely trying to get sound and stimulation in any form is my recommendation. I've seen lots of patients get better understanding, not necessarily good understanding, but better as they continue to wear a hearing aid over time. Does insurance cover this? It depends on who your insurance is. Yeah, Medicare does not pay, but some of the supplements are paying for hearing aids. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that was a long answer to <laughs> about a bicross, but a bicross is basically a microphone on one side, a hearing aid on the other. They talk to each other to help give you a fuller sound. <laughs> yes, Winnie. Yeah, that's what I have. It was uh, biphonic. It, it's called phone app. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, well, phone app, right? And I've had it for several years. Uh, it still is not real great. My left ear also is 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 the one that I uh, lost the sudden hearing in it, and um, the first hearing aids, hearing aid I had didn't help at all. But then I got the biphonic, and it's it's helped me. Thank you. I'm sure that's good information from Tracy. You know, we can learn so much from each other. So I would, and I'm just wondering, um, I'd be curious. So this is for me. Um, some of you have been attending meetings, both Zoom meetings and in-person meetings for some time. Can you tell me the value of attending these meetings? If you were to talk to a friend who has sudden hearing loss or any kind of hearing loss, what would you tell them about your experience uh, attending meetings either online or in person? Does they, can anybody respond to that? What have you learned that was so valuable that you wouldn't have learned anywhere else in a meeting? Susan, you've been going to meetings forever. All I can see is your one eyeball. <laughs> I think Kay has her hand raised. Who has her hands raised? 
K. K? Okay, K. Would you like K, would you like to respond to that? Um, yes, I'm hearing very little this morning. I'm having problems with my new equipment, but I have hope. Um, I've had two hearing aids that were by cross. One of my audiologists told me I only got 6% gain in the good ear from the deaf ear. But in my own experience, if someone sat on my deaf side and talked to me, I couldn't hear them. Mm -hmm. It made no difference. And I had some very close calls out where cars back up because I don't hear them coming at all. And so I, I think it's kind of a safety factor to be able to hear out of both ears if possible, but I have gone for the cochlear implant. So that's what I'm working on now. If I had it to do over again, I would get it immediately. Well, congratulations on that. I know you did this, you know, during the COVID lockdown, didn't you? Or how, yeah. what, how long ago <laughs> did you get your cochlear implants? How long ago? Uh, I think it was uh, February. They did the surgery and then March, they turned it on because there's an interval there of five or six weeks where you don't hear. And um, the the uh, increase the new hearing is going from zero to we don't know where so it takes a while for it to start so all right. my friends are saying so can you hear now and the answer is no <laughs> <laughs> but i have hope <laughs> well i'm one of those people that i have a, i have a hearing aid on one side and a cochlear on the other and it's it's now been 10 years Gosh, I can't even believe it. it's been 10 years since I've um, had the cochlear implant. And you're right. So when you have the surgery, then there's a 30-day period, give or take a few days, to allow the, the surgical site to heal inside and out. And then they put a processor on and activate the internal piece. One, three, six, zero, okay. nine, five. Okay, so putting people on mute. Okay, so it and and it took me. I think it was about three or four weeks before I was activated. So now being activated doesn't mean bingo you can hear. Now there's a learning process. The brain has to get used to hearing sound. And it's not acoustical sound anymore. It is now like a digital electronic sound. So people sometimes would sound like chipmunks, Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Darth Vader, you know, anything but normal. But that's temporary. That's temporary. And then suddenly, if you, if you do certain exercises, for your ears, yeah. oral rehabilitation, reading and listening, like, like reading a book and listening to it at the same time so that you, you see the words visually and you hear them and you practice. That's a reading exercise. That's one of the things that they suggest. And I know there's other programs uh, that are available for oral rehabilitation but that will speed up your recovery and uh, help you to hear faster. So you had your, you, you were activated in March and this is July. So, so have you seen a progress? Has it been? Yes, yes. yes. I didn't used to be able to hear the car radio. I couldn't tell if it was on or off. Now I'm listening. I hear programs and I can understand. I really can't get music yet, but it's wonderful to be able to hear voices. I feel like I'm being brought back from the dead. Wonderful. Okay. Um, where was I going with that? Okay, anybody else have any other questions or any comments? Oh, I had another question. 
um, for several years, seven, eight years, we've had in-person meetings. We've been holding them in Laguna Woods. And then we had the pandemic and all that stopped. And I picked up doing Zoom meetings almost right away, trying to uh, keep people connected. And now things are opening up. Um, I'm, I'm not able to get a meeting room just yet. Um, there's a lot of uh, employee shortages in Laguna Woods, so getting a, a meeting room uh, isn't in the cards just yet. But I'm just wondering, should we continue to have Zoom meetings or should we resume uh, in-person meetings? What's your opinion on that? Zoom is better. I would I'm like sure. Zoom. I like Zoom. Yes. Yeah, Thank I you. like Zoom. Yeah. I, can I say something about the answer to the question, uh, what I learned from coming to meetings? Yeah. I, I, in terms of tech, tech, technology and um, and starting with the loop, that that's where I started before I even was a resident of Laguna Woods Village. Um, and but the main thing I learned was the, that out there there are these incredible people like Tony Barry and 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 Mundell Noel um, who absolutely can save your life in terms of really caring and really knowing so much and having infinite patience. And so that, that's what I learned. I do talk a lot about the hearing loop. Um, for those people that are in Laguna Woods, uh, Clubhouse 3, also known as the Performing Arts Center, so dining room one and dining room two were looped at the beginning of the uh, COVID. And since then, those rooms have been refurbished. New flooring, new wall coverings, paint, lo lots of cleanup. I, I was very concerned that the hearing loop would not survive all of that uh, remodeling and refurbishing. I'm here to report that they did survive. And uh, Rick Archbold and I had a meeting with Laguna Woods. We went down there and tested it. And it's actually better now. And we also promoted getting the theater looped. And I, I was out of town for a week, but I got phone calls in that I uh, I have yet to return. And I do believe that they are moving forward to looping the theater. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Yes. So all of those plays, uh, you know, can't really hear anybody, uh, can't understand anybody. The system they had was so antiquated. Uh, so now it uh, looks like we're going to have a hearing loop and uh, so the recreation department is pioneering that they're they're advocating and moving that forward so i would just like to say nancy thank you for the compliment um one of the things i know from a professional point of view is it's easier for you to see the closed captioning to be in your own home to have your own equipment so you're more comfortable with understanding the messages that are being spoken. But do any of you miss the in-person communication and the little talks that you have independent? I mean, that's a big part of it is feeling connected that there's other people going through what you're going through. And the online presence does help that yet there's something about the physical touch. So I would just be interested on, are you, anybody in this group, would you attend the meeting physically or should it be bimodal, right? Being online as well as in person? What are your thoughts? 
Daniel, you have to unmute yourself. Remember okay. how to do that? There you go. Well, one of the things that I got over time um, was the understanding that there's a lot of people besides myself that have the same problem. And I didn't feel quite as lonely. Right. And from the meetings, I learned that you have a tendency to withdraw from activities because of your hearing. And I spent a couple of years doing that before I realized it was happening. Going to the meetings helped me get through that. But a lot of what I got in going to the meetings was the fact that I had to learn to be my own advocate. I had to speak up about my needs and how to get what I needed from people. And it's not as difficult as a lot of people think it is. I, I have a tendency to use a lot of humor with what I do, makes it easier. But I think that the exchange on a personal basis adds something that you can't get over the tube. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, there's there's a few things that you that I'm aware of that you do, Daniel, like over the phone and how you talk, how you advocate for yourself. So um, you want to tell everybody some of the things that you say to get that. Uh, well, when you, you know, medical offices, you call medical offices and you're going to find somebody with an accent. And, it, and it's important that you understand what they're saying, but you're not understanding. So what do you say? What does Daniel Boone say? Well, usually whether it's on the phone or in person, I usually start off with saying, I'm going to have to ask you to do something that's very difficult to do. Because of my hearing loss, I'm, could you speak a little slower? Or, and if, if it's somebody on the phone, one of the service people, uh, they always say, not at all. It's, but in about three sentences, they're back to their speed again. <laughs> and with that, I said, now, wait a minute. I told you it wasn't easy. <laughs> and most people, most of them kind of find some humor in that. And if it's an accent, I let them know that the problem is mine, not yours. Because with hearing loss, one of the things we have difficulty with is accents. And so I want you to understand that. And most people just find so long as they know and understand. And now I I, I found that people with accents, I can hear them better just by asking them to speak slower or to yeah. enunciate. Um, and, and it's not that they speak fast so much, but if they do slow down just a little bit without being exaggerated. Oh, I hate it when they exaggerate it for <laughs> you. Oh my gosh, that is painful. <laughs> and, and obviously I... They didn't get the message. So, um, but just asking them to slow down a little bit gives me, my brain, more time to process what's being said and understand. So, and I, of course, I do ask for repeats, but people really don't like to repeat themselves. And, some, and sometimes I've even had to ask more than once and people don't like that at all. So but I, I, I think, yeah, me, Tony, Tony, with that, uh, um, I tell them that maybe I heard a certain part of the sentence, but not the rest of it. And that seems to make people more acceptable about re repeating to me. Right. Yeah. Great idea. What, what you can't do when you're talking to other people is you can't let your frustration project because that makes other people a little uncomfortable you can't be angry and angry about your hearing loss i've uh at the meetings i've had a lot of people come up and ask me questions 
and I ask them to slow down, even though they're, they, they're there with hearing loss, some people get angry because you don't understand them. Um, Jana, unmute yourself. Yep. Yeah. Hi, so my Hi. name's Jenna. I'm new. I just joined and I just joined the Mission Viejo chapter. So it's really nice to meet you all today. Um, I wanted to add um, to what Daniel and my screen shifted around. So somebody else just said about um, advocacy and letting people know that you have a hearing loss. Um, I'm part of a, an online community where we talk about advocacy a lot. And one thing my friend recently suggested to me, which works really well, is that when you are talking to people and letting them know about your hearing loss, you start with what you have to say is really important to me. To help me understand better, I need you to slow down, speak clearer, write it down, whichever. But saying that what you have to say is really important to me can we move to a quieter room? It lets them know that they are not being dismissed either. And I've tried it and it's been amazing because people then want to help you. They want to be part of that. So I just wanted to share that as well as we were talking about advocacy. Thank you, Janet. That is actually something that we have covered uh, with Ann Mundell Noel. You know, around Thanksgiving time, we have a, uh, a program about communicating uh, we're getting together with family members that we haven't seen for years, maybe that live thousands of miles away. And how do we connect with them? And they're going, blah, 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 blah. everybody's so excited. But so, like you said, you know, maybe moving to another room where it's a little quieter and, and, and expressing that what they have to say is important and you want to hear every word. And, you know, so I, that's great. That's great. I totally agree. Uh, Rena? Yeah, my question is about this caption call phone. Yeah, sometimes when I talk, uh, it gets static, especially call number. The other sites, uh, they say that it gets static and it just, they can hear me well, it's just uh, off and on. But I don't know what happens. Sometimes this problem just, uh, I can just people can get can hear me and sometimes I can hear them. It gets just static and like I don't know what happens. Why that is there is a problem with it. This caption called cell phone. Oh. Okay. Does anybody experience this? Like uh, yeah, because it's when I especially when I call toll number. This other side can hear me well. They just say it's static. We can hear you. It's just on and off, something like that. Yeah. So are you using the internet with your phone? So it, do you have voice over internet? Yeah, I am. Yeah, so it's connected to my internet. Right. Because the internet is not very strong in Laguna Woods. And oftentimes that's a contributing factor to the quality of the sound. Right. But I live in Irvine. It's supposed to be. I don't know what's why it is. It. It's uh, sometimes when, uh, it, it, especially toll number. That's the problem. Eight hundred eight six six. Yeah, you might you might actually check if Cox or whoever your internet provider is to make sure that you check your up speeds and your down speeds to make sure they've maximized the internet because the bandwidth is a factor for those phones. Oh, uh, okay. So I should, I should con uh, contact the, my internet provider. Yeah. For okay. me. That's yeah. usually Thanks. the issue. Oh, okay. The other thing I just wanted to comment with Jana, thank you very much for your contribution. Um, two things that have come up on the meeting previously that are just a review, um, and I think Tony will agree, is that you can ask people to please speak to my eyes, right? So that when they're talking that you want to use your lip reading ability, but if you just say to them, you know, I just need you to speak to my eyes, 
that way they're facing you. And the second thing is to make sure that when people don't understand slowing down, like Daniel has said, they speed up. And Daniel has helped me to tell and counsel patients by saying, could you just put some space between your words? So by telling people that you just need a little bit more space between each word, they will not only speak more distinctly, but they will slow down and that will give you better comprehension ability. You know, Anne, I love talk to my eyes. That really gets people's attention. Talk to my eyes. And they go, whoa, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> So that that's a good one. That's really a good one. All right. Who's up next for making any kind of comment about communication? Yeah, Winnie. I, I had a question for uh, Andy. Um, I took the Android class and it was excellent. I really, really liked it. And <laughs> yeah, it was a very beginning thing. Do you have an, another class that's like a next step up? Not yet. But you plan on maybe getting it sometime? We were working on it before the shutdown. So it's on hold, but um, I can't say when. I just eventually, with any luck, yes. Okay, good. Because it was very helpful. <laughs> and, and good. Yeah. Good. And, and it was basic. And some of us need the, the basic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We were really hoping and we were we had momentum and we were going and then the shutdown. So, um, you know, yes, I hope so. Thank you. Yep. Would you as long as we're talking about Android classes. Um, so you also do iOS uh, iPhone. And um, so and these are basic classes, but what you're going to get out of it is how to um, personalize the phone for you, the volume control, the contrast, uh, some of the basic settings that you may not be aware of, yes. and just to get familiar uh, with the phone. So if that's something that interests you, there's no charge for the class, and they're doing it on Zoom. And I see uh, Andy's phone number there, 714-325-4898. Uh, <laughs> There's her email address, asquires at ddtp.org. So you could email her to find out when is the next class. And the good thing is at the end of the class, they mail you a manual. So you have something in writing to refer to afterwards. Oh. Yes. We noticed that, uh, and we've done this since we started the trainings five years ago, people were saying they don't come with an instruction book. <laughs> and that's true. And one of the reasons is that the features change so quickly that I think the manufacturers, if they put out a manual, it would change quickly. So we match the, our manual with what we teach you and the slides that we're showing in full color and with words. So if you like words or you like pictures, you get both. Um, and that's been very helpful. Excellent. And also I put in the chat uh, regarding caption call, I, I put their website, their email address. If you have questions about caption call, any issues you might have, you can email them at support at captioncall.com. They have a toll free number. It's actually it's actually in the directory of your phone. Wow. If, if you know how to get to your phone book and you can just tap the number and it'll dial speed dial it for you. Oh. Um, it's toll free 877 557 2227. So, uh, so that 
use those numbers for sales or questions, technical support, uh, just if you want to inquire about getting a phone, um, that's where you can go. And uh, for amplified phones, uh, and it's not just amplified phones that, that California Phones does. They have people with speech impairments, um, low vision, um, people with mobility issues. They have phones that just operate on spoken command can dial up so so anybody with a disability can uh, look to california phones for help so that you can stay connected yes alan alan so, yes so one thing that they have is the sonic alert alarm yeah. system and i guess they've had it for a couple years now Mm -hmm. But it's not well known that they have it available and it's expandable to accommodate almost anybody's needs. Right. People don't necessarily think about California phones having alarm clocks that are very loud or uh, visible. We have the artificial larynx devices for people who have had their larynx removed. We have all types of communication devices right? Um, and accessories to help you hear better, the Quattro, which Tony uses a lot, um, Bluetooth equipment, you know, I like to say this is not your grandmother's CTAP, you know, because I, I've been around, I've been doing this 20 years, and the equipment has changed a lot. So even if you think you know what CTAP is, and you say it's a clunky old phone, I'm not going to use, you know, bring that clunky old phone back, to our office if you if you want to and and see what's new and what might be helpful to you and everything we do is free so uh the worst thing you do is is waste a little time if we don't have anything else new and different for you but you know definitely give it a try yeah tony i, I just want to say um it's it's free to you as a customer but you are actually paying for it in your taxes so, you know, I just want, I just hate it when people yes. say free, 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 free. It's not right. really free. Somebody is paying for it and, uh, and you are, so in the bottom of your bill, um, whether it's a mobile uh, bill or a, a regular bill, there's a little tax, California tax, universal uh, line code, something. Uh, so it is paid for through your taxes. Um, okay, Rena. Yeah. Yeah, I just have a question. I'll be moving to Nevada soon. Is it okay that I will be attending your meeting if I am I, I will be in Nevada? Is it okay to attend meeting? If you are, you you would come all the way from Nevada? Uh, zoom in. If you zoom in. <laughs> you know what I'm thinking about doing. And it requires technology. I'm thinking about having a hybrid meeting. So I used to have a meeting at, at my time. I would come in at 12 o'clock and I'd set up all this equipment and and we'd have a meeting uh, for an hour, hour and a half. And then, you know, by four o'clock, I'd go home. Well, I'm going to get rid of that. No snacks, no coffee, no cookies, whatever. You come in for an hour and we have a hybrid meeting, which means we have Zoom on the wall. So we have people attending by Zoom and we have people in the room. I don't know if, you know, I love technology. I think I can figure it all out, but we'll just have to see. But I need to do it in a smaller period of time and hopefully I can have people help me figure that all out. And Alan is, has got information that I haven't gotten from you yet, but anyway, I'll be getting information from him. Um, and I'm hoping maybe Laguna Woods will have somebody uh, that works in their electronics area that can help. They haven't in the past, but we'll see. Alan, thank you, Alan, thank you for all your help to Tony, because I know you take a big burden off of her by being on these meetings. So we really appreciate all you do. I'm also, yeah, I wanted to say with this, um, this hybrid meeting, well, we'll just see. We'll just see. 
I forgot what I was going to say. So I'll pass on that. So Tracy, yes, you're up next. Okay. Um, thank you, Andy. Um, you expressing some, uh, telling us some information about alerts and stuff kind of reminded me of some of the, some little things I've been um, coming across. So there's medication I have to take at 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. And recently I missed one of my 7 a.m. Um, alerts because when I was sleeping, I was sleeping on uh, the ear that I can hear out of. So the mm -hmm. pillow muffled. So the ear I really can't hear out of, I didn't hear the alarm go off. Mm. And um, so I thought, okay, there's got to be something that can be out there, whether I need to move my, I use my cell phone for my uh, alarm. Mm -hmm. so maybe I need to move my cell phone closer. And then also if people knock on my door. I don't have a ring, a doorbell. Mm. Uh, I don't hear it all the time, depending. So I tell my neighbors, you, you need to text me. Mm -hmm. um, so just hoping to find solutions in, in the upcoming future. Um, so the way, the, what I understand, and Andy, you can correct me if I'm wrong. So California phones is about communication access. So they wouldn't be addressing your doorbell issues. They, they, they could be addressing your answering your phone issues. But so I want to ask you, Andy, do you have a device that is like a wristband that connects like to a smartphone or whatever that would vibrate an alarm? No, and you are correct that under our legislation, we focus on communication devices. However, the sonic alert alarm clock that was referenced earlier, we do have that available. Uh, do you have, Tracy, do you have equipment through our program already? Yes, no, no, no. Okay, so you'd need an application just signed and uh, as a hearing provider can sign it for you with the hearing loss. And the easiest way to get equipment if you're local is to come to our office in Orange. Because of COVID, we're asking people to call and make an appointment. You can make an appointment. I'll put it all in the chat. You can make an appointment, come in with your signed application and pick it up. And I was trying to look it up right now, the Sonic Alert alarm clock. Um, I believe it it comes with a bed shaker. So you put that under your pillow and it vibrates. If I'm not wrong, you might be able to purchase separately from the manufacturer some kind of doorbell alert. I'm not 100% sure because we don't provide that, but I would start with the alarm clock with the bed shaker plugged in, Put that under your pillow. That will that will wake you. Um, and then you could look into getting an additional little doorbell device so that kind of everything is in one spot. That makes sense. Okay. So the website I'm just putting it in the chat. The CaliforniaPhones.org. That's the easiest place to go to. And you can call the 800 number, make an appointment, um, and. If you need an application mailed directly to you, I can do that. Otherwise, you can get an application at californiaphones.org. And then, like I said, if uh, Anne is here, did she drop off? I lost her. Um, Anne, don't see her. are you talking to Anne? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't see her. She might have just disappeared. She just she she oh. left a note in chat that she had to leave. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, she says that she. Has oh. A vibrating alarm clock with a bed shaker on display in her office. Excellent. Also, okay. I see here, Jana has recommended Neo Sensory. So that is a product that it's a vibrating alert, if I if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and, and I see that Alan says the East Bay last meeting covered the sonic alert. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. So efficient. So Kay, I think you're up next. Um, 
this is probably old technology because I've had it for maybe 10 years, but I have a bed shaker alarm clock only separate from my phones that um, is a lifesaver. Without it, I was sleeping through the alarm like for hours, <laughs> a regular alarm when I suddenly went deaf. So having mm. a bed shake uh, wakes me up and is very reliable. A friend who is blind and deaf recommended it to me and it, it's really saved me. Excellent. I have a bed shaking alarm too. So uh, yes, Alan. Oh, and after Alan, it will be Daniel Boone. Go ahead. I was just going to say that Daniel had his hand up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Well, he didn't use the raise hand feature, so it wasn't like popping up to get getting my attention. Two Go items. Ahead, two items. One, Tony, you, I have the device that you know uh, flashes the lights. Yes. I got it from you years ago. Yes. Um, and, and a sec and a second point of personal privilege. Could Susan adjust her camera so we can see something more than her hairstyle? <laughs> there you I are. I haven't seen her for a long time, and I'd like to see that smile. Thank you, Susan. Well, everybody should try to be aware of, of themselves when they're on camera, that they are visible, and, um, and also... Uh, you know, I was, on, I was on one of these meetings when um, a woman decided, she didn't realize that, you know, all eyes were on her, but she decided to change her clothes. So, <laughs> don't, so please don't forget that if you're participating uh, and, and you want to eat or do something, you can turn your camera off. And you can still see us and, and you can still talk to us. But if you're going to do yeah. something private, you know, um, you can just turn your camera off. And uh, so I know the days are warm and you just can't wait to get that sweater off. But just hold off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you, might, you might add please to that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the meeting where that happened we had over a hundred people in the meeting. Oh my goodness. So it wasn't, well, it, so the, here's the thing is you can only see 24 squares. Mm. Per screen, and then you have to flip over for the others. So I don't know who saw her and who didn't. Okay. So, yeah. And it wasn't deliberate. She wasn't, you know, being, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you call it? A product, provocative or anything? And it wasn't. She wasn't doing a product, pro, provocative dance either. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, okay, who's up next? I don't see any hands, either flapping or electronic. And the video has been edited, so you cannot go back and see it. Yes. Oh, you remember that, Alan, huh? Yes. <laughs> that was that was a rather large hearing loss association meeting, and it was a national meeting. And so anybody. And by the way, you know, the Hearing Well Club existed to serve Laguna Woods residents. And we also had some people from the outside. And... But now we are, uh, we've merged into the Hearing Loss Association Mission Viejo chapter. And are the resources available to you connected to the chapter is much greater. And there are, um, I've been promoting other people's meetings because there may be a topic that is really interesting to you. We're just having one meeting a month. We will be dark in August um normally we're, we're dark july and august but i decided to spring and have this meeting because you know we've been in lockdown people have things to say share talk about so we're having this meeting so but we we won't be around in august i, I still answer emails 
uh, Anne Noel is is uh, Anne Mundell Noel is available um, as our audiology advisor questions whatever and she can be reached at um, Alan if you could put this in it's Ann at amazinghearing.net uh, so you can email her Ann at hearing amazinghearing.net she changed her name a couple of times so um, and again California phones you've got um, a squires Andy squires a squires at ddtp.org it's it's on her in her little square there That's lovely. Yep. <laughs> I need to do something like that I do have if I turn off my camera you can see my logo hearing loss association but it doesn't have uh, email address or telephone number or anything like that. I, I don't like it much because if I move, it's kind of like my head floats and my hands disappear, but it's efficient. Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Okay. Well, I hope you all have enjoyed this meeting today. Um, by the way, we always have captioning. Today we're using ASR. I just want you to to understand the difference between a live captionist, captioner, and ASR is automatic speech recognition. So Zoom um, offers for paid customers, um, at, even at the lowest level, the um, uh, to add captioning to the meetings, and it's free. And one thing that I've done. Um, and it's it's like pulling teeth, but I have contacted the uh, Emeritus, uh, Emeritus uh, Program, um, Saddleback Emeritus, which, which has classes for seniors, and I talked to the director um, of, the, uh, of the Emeritus Program and explained to him that that was free, and so for classes that I sign up, I expect to see captions. And you, but you, but on an individual basis, it's really important to uh, advocate to the instructor. And when you when you sign up, you get the instructor's email address. So I email them and I say I'm one of 48 million people in the United States that benefits from captioning. It's available for free, and please learn how to turn them on for me. And so. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. There was one one class that I was in. Um, I left the class because the instructor was playing a video that I had just finished watching before I started the class. So I decided to take that 20 minutes and do something else. And when I came back, he had turned off the captions. So that's ridiculous. It should just be on for everybody. You never know who's using it. There's a lot of people who won't talk about their hearing loss. They won't talk about their needs. And so this really does fall into the category of advocating for yourself. And so I've done that and I'm hoping, um, I have the complete um, cooperation from the director of the emeritus program and I think it should go to the regular student body as well all of their classes online why not because you can turn it on or off individually if somebody doesn't want to see, you're not forcing captions on people I know when I'm visiting uh, family um, they don't like they're very annoyed by the captions and so I understand there are people who are, find it a distraction or maybe the, even the captions go too fast and they can't read it and, and stay in track with what's going on. So they would rather not see it. So in the Zoom experience, you can turn them off and you can turn them on. So, okay, I think, I think it's time we're gonna say adios unless you've got something else. <clears throat> Anybody else have anything that would like to contribute? All right, I think I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> nope.
Susan, we haven't heard from you all day. You're 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 mute. You're muted. You need to unmute yourself. I always understand. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting slower and slower as I get older and older. <laughs> well, I understand that completely. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to say earlier, and in that I'm I'm asking to have meetings in Clubhouse Seven. And that's a benefit to non-residents because there's there's no gate there, and the and the room that I'm requesting is looped. So, <coughs> uh, Jana and Tracy, do you know about hearing loops? No, I don't. Okay. So, Jana and Tracy, are are you people that have, don't have hearing aids yet? Oh no, I have hearing aids all my life. Yeah. Okay. And Tracy doesn't yet. Yeah. Okay. You want to be sure. Yes, just a minute, Daniel. You want to be sure that when you get your hearing aids, that you ask for T coil equipped hearing aids. It doesn't really add to the cost. And um, some providers might argue with you that, oh, Bluetooth is it? Well, Bluetooth will not help you if you have jury duty you need telecoils to use their assistive devices that they offer. I know what you're or, talking about now with the loop. I call it something else, but I understand now. Okay, so so telecoils, there are hearing aids that have telecoils and Bluetooth. I think they're both important. So, um, I, so I, I, I don't have right now to, to teach all about hearing loops, we will have a meeting about that. There is information on our website, which is www.hlaamv.org. It's, it's in the chat. And by the way, you can, you can save a transcript of today's meeting yourself. Um, if you open up, we go down to captions and click on, um, uh, open full transcript and down at the bottom it says save transcript and it'll save on your computer when we shut down. Same thing is true for um, uh, the chat box. Uh, click on the three dots, op open up chat, click on the three dots and say save chat. And those, those two pieces of information will save on your computer when we hang up. I'll also be putting this recording on YouTube probably in a day or two. Uh, Daniel, I, I'm sorry, I, you wanted to say something. and I, I just know. wanted to remind you and everybody, if you go to open meetings again, you will need some volunteers. Uh, yes. I do what? I'm not sure. What we're gonna, what they're gonna do, because I'm, I'm, I'm reducing, you know, some of the the frill and the fluff that we provided before. We provided personalized um, uh, name badges, and we had served coffee and tea. We provided cookies, and we decorated the table, and yeah. it's a lot of work. And, and so, Tony. The, Tanya, I have a question. There won't be any Zoom meeting anymore, so only in person. I I had talked about having a hybrid meeting, which means have a Zoom meeting in oh, inside okay. an in person meeting. Oh, okay. Thank you. That would be wonderful. Well, I think <laughs> I, well, <coughs> this we can reach so many more people, and there are some people that really do prefer Zoom meetings. I prefer zoom meetings but there's other people that prefer in person they they enjoyed them before and they want to do it again so was it is there anybody here that wants to have in-person meetings wow okay can i, can I say oh. something 
I actually do. I I would like to do in-person meetings. I think maybe uh, something in the back of my mind is there's still so many uncertainties around COVID. I'm hesitant to commit to that. And it's why I backtrack to saying I prefer a Zoom meeting. Um, but I mean, in in a everyday normal setting, I would prefer in-person, but yeah. You know, in our meetings, I started out in 2012 and we would have 30, 35 people. About the time we were shutting down, we were having 80 people and some meetings would be over a hundred. So, so they did, they did serve a lot of people and, and they came back and they enjoyed the meetings. So if we can find a way to maybe do both, I think that would be great. So I, I don't know, it'll be very experimental. I know other clubs, chapters, are exploring the possibility. So it's just a matter of technology, having the technology and, uh, and it better be easy. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody, if you know anybody that's uh, technical oriented, you know, I was thinking about calling Saddleback College or even the local high school to find out if there, there would be some volunteers, smart kids that know and could understand those things. You know, in high school, you have to serve so many hours to graduate, community service hours. So, you know, maybe I could get a really smart person to help out, but then I'd have to be constantly changing that person because once they do their hours, they're, you know, <laughs> they're gone. So anyway, We'll, we'll do, for sure, we'll keep going on Zoom. And so, uh, Jana and Tracy, I hope you join us again. And um, if you're, are you on our, on my email list? I am, yes. Okay. I think so. Okay. Well, if you go, if you go to my website, hlaamv.org, you can click sign on, sign up. I only send out one or two emails a month, period. Usually it's a, a meeting notice and a reminder. Sometimes I send out a third one if I've got uh, information I, I, I want you to have um, regarding events or something, something important. Okay. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Thank well, remember, you. you. Remember, before I leave, I hang up here. You can save transcript and save the chats if you want to. Last chance. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.